I, I feel like it's pretty sturdy. Oh! Okay, let's do that again. <laughs> What's up, Slick Dealers? Summer's right around the corner. Everyone's getting ready for outdoor festivities. And if you're hopping on this video, you're probably thinking like I was, what is the best grill for me? That's a tough question to answer. You can get into the grill game at so many different price points and styles, but for the purposes of this video, we're talking about propane gas grills specifically. I scoured the web to find the best budget grill and the best grill all around that I could find. And here's what I came up with. This next grill four burner retails for $299 and this Weber Genesis grill retails for $1,079. I mean, sure, you can probably find a gas grill for cheaper than 300 bucks, but both of these grills were highly sought after and well-reviewed, and they're both comparable in terms of what they offer. Today, we're gonna cover our impressions of both and give you a good idea of what you can expect when you buy each of these. We're looking at setup, features, performance, and price to determine a winner. Though I do have grilling experience, I decided for this video to enlist the help of some friends of mine who have a lot more experience than I do. Hey, I'm Justin. Hi, I am also Justin. These are my friends, Justin. The first section is set up, which I know you guys weren't here for, so I'll quickly cover that. One of the biggest gripes from first time grill buyers is that they didn't realize that you had to set these up when you buy them. And putting them together is not quick, particularly easy or fun. Imagine an Ikea build, but with electrical wiring and gas hookups. I spent over four hours last night unboxing and setting up both of these grills. Needless to say, I know both of them from the inside out. I started with the next grill, which came in a smaller package and was lighter overall. While the lightweight was initially a relief, I came to realize it was the result of a lower quality build. One down that only took two hours. Is the Weber so much higher quality that it warrants paying an extra $800? Ooh, I don't know about that, but it is definitely a higher quality build. Another advantage of the Weber, its parts came in labeled bags, so it was easier to find those little bits I needed when I was looking for them. Comparing the two, the next grill was a little bit more challenging to set up because it features a less user-friendly assembly manual. Like, what the heck is that? They just throw the parts in the box and expect you to figure out which is which based on its general shape. And there's not really any indication of how big this is. Another downside for the Weber is that its steel pieces were covered with an annoying peel-off plastic wrap that you have to remove before putting it together. It also has a more intricate electrical system, but I will say I was able to follow the instructions on both and the next grill actually gave me more trouble on my first light up test than the Weber. Overall, the Weber wins on setup. While both were fairly straightforward, the Weber's assembly guide was just a little bit more intuitive and user friendly. Next, let's talk about price. The next grill retails for $299, while the Weber Genesis retails for $1,079. Sheesh! That is a huge difference in price. If you're considering looking for a sale, we know from Slick Deals experience that the best sales for grills typically happen either around Memorial Day weekend or Black Friday. So you're gonna wanna look the end of May or the end of October for your best chance at a sale on a propane grill. All right, on to features. The next grill four burner grill has four burners and a total cooking space of 626 square inches, which ends up being about 23 burgers. And on that cooking space, you're gonna get a total power output of 60,000 BTUs. Next grill coming in clutch with a five-year warranty on those four burners, although the rest of the grill is only covered by a one-year limited warranty. Justin, how long do you think it took for this to heat up to temperature? I would say roughly around five to 10 minutes. Yeah? Yeah. Probably, probably actually took a little bit longer because you kept opening and closing the lid, huh? Oh, testing out the heat. <laughs> so this grill also has a side burner over here in which you could saute, fried some rice, and also some fried some chicken. And I know you weren't here for setup, Justin, but the wheels on the base are caster wheels, kind of standard. Two of them can spin and two of them just go forward and back. Inside of the grill, we have a, a propane 
holder, which is also a grove right here. It's circular and in the back, we have a latch in which it locks to so it prevents movement. Rating overall build quality, how would you say you feel about the next grill? From what I experienced, I believe the next grill deserves an eight. I'd say it's deserving of like a, a seven or an eight. All right, let's move on to the Weber. The Weber Genesis features 669 square inches of total cooking space, which Home Depot estimates is about 25 burgers. The total output for power is 39,000 BTUs, which is quite a bit less than the next grill. It's also got a 10 year warranty. My impression is that it looks like it's gonna last. You've got stainless steel appliances. You've got the nice rubber siding. On the inside, you've got a nice really big storage space down under the bottom. Okay, but up here, you also have a nice drip tray, plenty of space, but also you have nice size wheels. So it's very easy to maneuver. On the side here, this is one of my favorite things about the grill. It's got this tank scale. It's kind of convenient because you don't have to wonder, oh, is my, am I gonna have enough propane for this next party? So it tells you right there and it's also hooked on. One more thing to note about the Weber grill is it is iGrill 3 compatible. iGrill 3 is Weber's way of connecting your grill to your smartphone for a more immersive grilling experience. For features, we're gonna have to give it to the Weber. Yes! I mean, this thing has smartphone connectivity. That's crazy. I'm sure that they're probably both gonna get the job done, but the Weber, you're gonna get it done smoother and with more bells and whistles. But we'll figure that out next in our performance test. You guys ready? Hell I'm yeah. ready. Oh yeah. Now with burgers, you wanna cook it for like maybe three, four minutes, then flip it once. Don't be that type that flips it a million times. Nobody likes that. You want a nice seared burger. Just one set of grill marks. You're not playing tic-tac-toe with the burgers, okay? All right, buddy, how do you like your burgers? I think that's a pretty typical question. Medium rare, buddy. Medium rare? How about yourself? Anything less than medium rare well, is also good. I, I, I can have them rare as well. Well, if it's well done, get out the kitchen, right? No, well, that's very true. All right, so you guys have given me the best that your grills can offer, and I'm just assuming that your skill level is the same, both, both of you guys. I mean, we have the same name, you so have, obviously. Exactly, that's the whole point. They're both Justin. Yeah, yeah, all right, so I'm, I'm just gonna try these out. That's a tough one. I think the burger is gonna be the defining Fine. I, 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 I don't know. I may have had, a, I may have some opinions already. We'll see. Drum roll. I'm gonna be downright honest. It's a tie, at least in terms of flavor. But I want to talk now about. Uh, what you guys experienced while you were cooking on each. Do you feel like the heat was good enough? How about heat distribution? So I feel like they cooked the same time and they came out really good as perfectly together. For me, I mean, there were a lot of things I learned. Every time I grill, I learned, but this grill in particular is a lot hotter. You cooked your hot dogs on the area that wasn't the searing section, Correct. right? Correct. And it still cooked them like super fast. The next grill and the Weber, pretty neck and neck. It's a tough one, but if we're talking overall quality here, I can't justify paying an extra $800 for all of the conveniences that the Weber offers. Sure, it has a better quality build, more features, and it's sturdier, but it really comes down to performance. How well do these things cook? And I can't say that the Weber Genesis performs three and a half times better than the next grill. Maybe I would rate the overall value for this about two times better. So if you could find a Weber Genesis S335 for around $600, that's an awesome get. When it came to cooking those burgers and dogs, the next grill did pretty much just as good as the Weber Genesis. So overall, which one? It's gonna be the next grill. Thank you guys so much for helping me today and thank you for feeding me. Absolutely. Hey, when are we gonna start grilling? I just want the Weber as payment for this. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> thank you guys for watching and please subscribe if you found this video helpful. I'm Pete King, see you next time. You can't actually take them.